This past summer, the consumer finance website WalletHub, uh, they release all kinds of different reports about employment numbers or about uh, you know consumer debt in various states, but they also looked at uh, the overall uh, equity of uh, various states. And one thing that they found was Illinois is at the bottom of the list for racial equity. I'm just going to read through some of these uh, statistics that they found uh, for racial equality in Illinois, 47th median annual household income, 47th labor force participation rate, 50th for unemployment rate, 33rd for home ownership rate, uh, 40th for poverty rate, 46th for homeless rate, 49th for share of unsheltered homeless, and 45th for share of executives. And this is concerning black Illinoisans. Uh, so when you look at these numbers, and uh, somebody else shared with me uh, some some uh, rather fascinating statistics on uh, really the ground level of how uh, black citizens in Illinois are impacted in different parts of the state. And uh, in particular, somebody shared with me uh, tax bills uh, for how much uh, property taxes are, for instance, uh, in Harvey uh, and then in Winnetka, two totally different uh, you know, populations, uh, income and racial disparities there. Uh, but for Harvey, uh, the tax rate is 26.1%, 26 percent, 26.1% for the property tax there, 26.1%. In Winnetka, which is much higher income, 8.6%. Again, compared to 26.1%, if you look at the racial makeup of those two areas, uh, the, the, the tax rates uh, compared to uh, those in more uh, white-dominated areas, uh, very low. Uh, but the tax rates in Harvey, 26.1%, with a uh, high number of black residents. Well, Democrats have uh, been uh, leading the state house for decades. I think in the past 18 years, uh, you've had uh, uh, you know Democrats in the um, uh, governor's office for most of that. Uh, what are Republicans uh, having to say about all of this? And are Democrat policies actually working? Uh, joining us now to talk about this is State Representative Dan Ugasti. He is from the Geneva area. Uh, Dan, thanks for taking time with us this morning. I guess just give us the uh, the rundown here. Uh, your thoughts on all of this and. Uh, what kinds of things can be done in Illinois to uh, to change this? Sure. Good morning, Greg. Thanks for having me. I appreciate you uh, taking a few minutes with me today. The, the issue here is that this study shows that we are worst in the nation overall. We're 50 out of 50, dead last, bottom of the heap for economic racial equality between black citizens of Illinois and white citizens of Illinois. So black Americans are faring far worse in the state that has been controlled by the Democrats. And, and you you were pointing to the governor's office. Let me, let me go one step further. They've controlled the General Assembly for the last 24 years. They, they have had the General Assembly for 24 years, the governor's office for 16 of those years, and could do, had the power to do anything they wanted. And they have. And, and, and as of late, they basically have sidelined Republicans into uh, barely being able to do anything that we believe will do, move the needle to help people within the state of Illinois, including black Americans, as well as white and Hispanic and, and every other ethnic group within the state. You know, we, so we, we hear a lot about equity uh, and what that means. And uh, for, for what, what we hear a lot of the policies moving forward, what does equity mean to you? And is that the same as equality? Um, or are we kind of, uh, you know, finding differences of what equality is to everybody has the same opportunities versus equity where, you know, the bar is set a certain way to give others uh, advantage over uh, a different population. So I, I have to admit, I, I look at equality, equality amongst all. And that's what we're standing for. Uh, we want to provide equal opportunity for all people within the state of Illinois. Because if you do that, if you provide them equal opportunity, equal opportunities in education, equal opportunities in the job market, in the you know uh, before job creators and lower crime in all our communities because crime robs people of opportunity if we do that people will thrive on their own they are geared and want to succeed everybody wants to no one comes into life saying you know 
I, I, I'm happy just scraping by or I don't, I, I want to be so far behind everyone else. People just need opportunity. And that's what we stand for. In those three areas especially, but in many others as well, we're just looking to provide people with, with opportunity, which is why at a uh, press conference I held this past Tuesday, I announced starting an opportunity caucus for everyone who is interested in, in the General Assembly. Any member can join in providing real reform so we can get out of this problem we're in of being 50th in the nation in racial economic equality. And equality, to me, is the focus. Equal opportunity for all. State Representative Dan Ugasti with us here on WMAY talking about uh, Illinois being at the uh, bottom of a list of uh, equality, uh, according to WalletHub. Uh, everything from labor force participation rate to homeless rates to uh, share of executives and so on. Uh, I do want to talk about education here in a moment because we do have the Invest in Kids School Scholarship Program, School Choice Program, that's set to expire at the end of the year. Uh, you guys are going to come back October 24th for six days worth of fall veto session. Uh, so so I want to touch on what you hope to accomplish there. But uh, if you could, I guess, you know, react to the, to the numbers that somebody shared with me about uh, the difference in property tax rates uh, in Winnetka versus those in Harvey. I mean, it's it's pretty staggering. Eight percent versus 26 percent. How is that right. even that, justifiable, especially with the uh, Democrats uh, controlling things at the state house? It, it's poor policy. That's all it is. The Democrats have passed their policies for the last 24 years, and poor policy is leading to situations such as that, as well as the it, it's the cause of what's happening in the rest of the study uh, of, of not providing proper opportunities for all Illinoisans on an equal basis. That's what we in our caucus are about, about moving the needle forward as Republicans, about providing opportunity for everyone, while still always protecting our citizens and our workers you know, we look out for people as well, but we need to be able to uh, entice job creators just to come in as a state without a lot of gimmicks, a lot, a lot of tricks, without a lot of cash going out to them. Um, that That is huge. And the property tax, we need to lower that. That's one of the reasons many businesses look and say, I don't want to be in it. There's a couple of them primarily, but property tax being one of the top and a property tax rate that that's high in Harvey, try and get a business to locate there when they have to pay a property tax at that rate. It's just not right. There are reforms that can be made. We have bills filed. They've been filed uh, for this session in the spring. I've had bills filed for years, the same bills for the last five years. I can't even get a hearing on it. We need the other party to start working together, considering our ideas, taking them up, giving us a fair hearing. And trust me, if they do that, we will implement the best policies for Illinois that will give everyone equal opportunity, and this situation will then correct itself. All right, let's talk about the Invest in Kids program now. This program is uh, funded by private donations in exchange for a 75% income tax credit. Has never really reached the full threshold of $100 million, but still, even with the tens of millions that have been donated, thousands of families have been helped by this, getting them out of failing public schools into uh, you know, a private school of their choice. But that's set to sunset at the end of this year. If you guys at the State House don't address it, what's going to happen come veto session? So I'm looking to address it. I, I believe this is critical for the people of Illinois. Uh, the majority of, of uh, students who receive this come from minority families. They need this money in order to have the same opportunity on an equal basis as everyone else. We have the, the president of the Chicago Teachers Union, Stacey Davis Gates, sending her own son to a private school, and she's trying to shut down the opportunity for other families to send their kids to a school of their choice. It's just about providing choice to people, allowing them to have opportunity. I, I will tell you this, just as an example, I could have sent my kids to private school. I chose not to because we had good public schools where I raised them. Not everyone is in that situation. We have to provide this opportunity so parents can choose good schools for their kids provide them a good education because we all know that is the first step, the first step of reversing a problem that we see from this wallet hub study.
Well, and if we don't see that happen, um, I mean, you've got six days. There's uh, big issues like energy policy that's expected to be debated. Who knows? Uh, uh, some kind of uh, uh, you know supplemental appropriation, maybe. Uh, maybe tackling funding for the migrant situation in Chicago. Uh, do you think that uh, there's going to be an appetite to get this across the finish line to extend the sunset of the Invest in Kids program? So whether there's an appetite or not currently, there should be and there must be. And I I, uh, filed a resolution just the other day calling on us to take an up and down vote, straight yes or no. Don't make this an amendment on anyone else's bill or anything else. Just have it on its own to take a vote on permanently removing the sunset on the Investing Kids Act and just letting this great program go forward in Illinois. It costs the taxpayers nothing. It's a tax credit plan that allows this to occur. And can it happen? Greg, I and you mentioned six days. That's six days over two different weeks with a, a week in between the two. I have seen more large legislation move through the General Assembly and get to the governor's desk in a shorter period of time than that. And especially, we can start working on it today. We have a month before we even go back almost. So, you know, let, let's let's not give anyone an out of saying, oh, there's just not enough time. There is plenty of time to do all the issues we want to address everybody. And this is one of the most important and should be at the top of everybody's list. Well, and again, all that really needs to happen to extend it is just to pass a bill that has, what, one line in it crossed out with an addition of another line and that's it? There, there are so many of them on file as well that I, I really can't even count it. I'm a co-sponsor on, on one, but I, I can't even tell you how many different people have filed the bill in this regard. That's how important it is to the people of the state of Illinois. The people want this. We should be doing it for them and not paying attention to what special interests want in this regard. State Representative Dan Ugasti, greatly appreciate you taking the time with us this morning. Um, we'll definitely be talking again in the near future. Uh, if not, uh, I'll see you at the uh, Illinois State House come October 24th when you guys return. Well, I appreciate you having session. me. Absolutely. Have a great day and be safe. I've had, one last thing, if you don't mind. Sure. Um, how are how are you how how's the Safety Act being implemented? Have you heard from your uh, local state's attorneys and sheriffs? Uh, how's the uh, no cash bail issue being held uh, handled uh, so far this week? So I am hearing a, a mix of different uh, reviews and feedback on, on what's happening and what's going on. I've heard some counties say it hasn't been such a big issue for them. I've heard other counties saying that, you know, uh, their, their worst fears were coming uh, to fruition and people that they believe should have been held are now uh, being released. So uh, it's just a mixed bag and it depends on who you're talking to. Um, hopefully, hopefully this just won't lead to any more crime, but I'm not very hopeful because I, I've seen what's happened in other counties that have taken this upon themselves to implement a policy very similar to this prior to the Safety Act taking place. So, um, look, we're, we're going to work on it. We have bills filed to improve this, to help reduce crime overall within the state and, and treat everyone fairly within the situation. But we need to protect the citizens of our state who are living as law-abiding citizens. Appreciate your time. State Representative Dan Ugasti, be safe, and we'll see you soon. Thanks. Have it a good is day. Springfield's Morning News on 92.7 WMAY, Springfield's News and